Hi, this is Thesia, Havela's Family Farms, and it's early. It's time to do chores. I've been thinking, I've been doing a lot of thinking lately, and, uh, <laughs> you know, I watch all these videos and everybody's taking care of their animals and stuff, and I just go out and take care of my animals and don't even put it on video, and I'm thinking, my goodness, people like animals, you know, especially since that one duckling that's been so cute lately. I thought, well, you need to see that, and I've got these dogs that... <laughs> They're a mess. So I'm gonna start showing you a little more of my morning chores every day. And, and there's gonna be a few changes, but I think I think they're gonna be enjoyable. So let's get started. First of all, this mess. I do not understand these three. There's Bailey and Beethoven. And Beethoven's so big you can't see the cat back there. But he's there. And Candy's like, eh, whatever. I'm just not into cats. Oh. <laughs> I think the cat just bit his lip. These guys are very noisy first thing in the morning. I just haven't figured out how to get them on video and feed them. I'll get that stuff figured out. Oh, I missed it. Usually, Bailey stands right there stalking. But Candy distracted her. And then, I'm gonna come out here in a minute and look at, pick up all these duck eggs. One of the things I was going to discuss with you this morning was some of my plans for these animals. Um, I was I was watching a video yesterday of uh, Morgan Gold of Goldshaw Farms, and he's talking about. Well, he he went into more in depth about his feelings about the capo and all the and the way that chickens are raised and you know just animals are are done in the in general. And I agree with what he's saying. The way animals are treated to go onto our plate are. It's horrendous. It's just terrible. And uh, so that's part of the reason I've come down, that started coming down this road. But I'm trying to make it gel in my mind how I want to handle it. This last year, getting Cornish crosses was has been very difficult for me. And my turkeys, you know, uh, if I had not run into... Um, the turkeys there at the at the farm store, I would not have anything for Thanksgiving this year. So I've been thinking about that. I'm I'm still going to do my Cornish cross, and I'm going to still try to raise them as best I can when I can get them. But I've got to come up with other sustainable ways of getting uh, birds. So like Morgan, I'm I have uh, that's the reason I got those little chicks that are in there with the turkeys and the Cornish crosses right now. And I'll show this to you in just a moment, but. That's the reason I started getting them because I want I'm going to start doing heavier breeds so that I can have the eggs and we don't go through a lot of chicken eggs here and I do have a, a couple of egg customers, but um, I need the I need more meat than I need eggs most of the time. So I'm trying to figure out how to do that. And of course, all my roost not all my roosters. I'm going to need one rooster to. Uh, are going to become chicken broth for me because chicken broth is a huge staple in my diet anymore. And the ducklings, the same thing with the ducklings. I'm trying to expand my duck flock. I just haven't decided how much yet. You know, uh, I want. I'd like to start selling duck eggs. I keep hearing how people really need some duck eggs and stuff. I'm kind of out here in the middle of nowhere. I have not started getting into the marketing part of it, and the reason I have not is because I don't have the volume for it. So I'll be perfectly honest. I have no idea how many ducks I need to get. I don't have any idea how many, how much I need for uh, eggs, and so it's kind of funny because I can go and nobody wants duck eggs, nobody wants any eggs for a long time, long time, and all of a sudden three or four people or more want eggs. And I'm going, oh, okay, especially in the winter time, but that that is something I'm not going to uh, you know winter time is downtime and I think that birds generally have a downtime too because that's the way God made us but one way or another I am trying to decide how I want to do my birds all my animals you know I want to, them to be happy and healthy and I want to have help, help, healthy food and I want to be more sustainable for sure. Like I said, I'm going to continue with the Cornish crosses, but I am going to start, like Morgan Gold, I'm going to start experimenting with, I have already started, it just takes a while, you know, it takes a while for a chick to turn to be old enough to lay eggs and become meat. So that's what those little barred rocks are out there in, in uh, the other pen. So, yes, I'm going to start experimenting, and I'm going to, I'm going to follow Morgan Gold on his Goldshaw Farms YouTube channel and see what, how his goes. I have, now, he's all the way up in Vermont, I believe, and I'm in northeast Oklahoma, and that's considerably further south. So, another thing I need to consider is I want the bigger, heavier meat birds, or, you know, uh, 
dual purpose essentially but I need them that's not so big that they'll pass out from the the heat that we have in the summertime here so there's a lot to think about a lot to a lot to do but uh yeah I'm going to be following him and I'm going to be doing making my own decisions on how I want to raise my animals here for for my consumption honestly what do you see Yeah, I don't. I never walk very fast because she's the smallest one. But I get those other dogs out here in this. With all three of them, I can't hardly walk around this property. <laughs> They've already gone through their soaked drain, at least in this bin. <laughs> now we'll give them some of the dry grain. That gives me something to put eggs in because now we're about to go on an egg hunt. Sometimes they lay in a little nest. I mean, I still find some scattered everywhere. And I believe all of these eggs are from my ducklings that just raised. I have not seen any from my uh, khaki Campbell. So here's a little nest. Well, there's only one in it, but they had made a nest out of it. And I don't believe, oh, I did. There is one there because there's another nest back up in here. And there's one out there because I'd already found five, so I wasn't expecting to find this one. It's hard to get without getting stick tights in my hair. I usually find a few out here, but I believe they all laid them up inside the regular pen this morning. So I'm not finding any out here. This is what I was talking about with my stalker hiding in the weeds behind the fence, studying the chickens and the ducks very quiet, very carefully. Oh. Now she's trying to figure out how to get through the fence. Hopefully she won't figure that out. And these little guys here, I still don't know why I have such dark, those those three that are striped. I mean, the one of them that's a little bit more gray, I can understand why it has more gray, but the two dark ones, I have no idea. Plus all that green and blue on their bill, I have no idea with that either. I've got to do something different with their water, though. Uh, I'm, gonna get, I'm out here with... I've only got seven little ducklings and I have got this water and this water and they're not empty thank goodness but I'm having to do them three times a day and of course we all know that ducklings are messy and I'm having to put new shavings in here basically every day so and they need to see some green grass so I'm gonna try and figure out something I can do to get them outside in the daytime you know actually outside like I had told you on my previous videos that when we were building this brooder I wanted to make a little pen so that the ducklings and chicks and everybody can go outside during the daytime when it's warm. I don't think they're feathered enough for me to do uh, an open waterer right now though so I guess for just a few more days or whatever I'm going to have to continue with with this style of, of water until I figure something else out. So yeah that's my next generation of ducklings and I was kind of glad that they had just, I hatched them instead of having to buy them from a hatchery honestly even though I don't know what two or three of them are. Beethoven keeps eating my scrub brush. I got a new one, but this one's still fun functional, so we're gonna wait. Isn't that crazy? Watch how they run for that new grass. That's cool. All right, got a few layers of crud off of the uh, water. It didn't look like it, but it did. And everybody's fed. And look at that, isn't that cool? I mean, I know I've mentioned this before. I've got a few birds on the onto the uh, the feed, but look how many are just chilling and enjoying the grass. Isn't that cool? No, you have to stay inside. And the turkeys are growing. Ah, oh, everybody. The only things that are not growing nicely, and I guess it's probably just a matter of perspective because because the Cornish cross are definitely designed to grow fast and then these uh, um, turkeys are broad breasted and they're designed to grow fast and then the little barred rocks is like yeah we'll just do our own thing so they look little bitty tiny compared to the rest of them but I'm hoping well I'll, I guess I'll cross that bridge when I get there so first thing Tuesday night we're gonna be loading up some uh, chickens and taking them and I think I've got 15 of them that go. So I'm looking forward to that. And we'll get this. We'll get the population in here down. It doesn't look like that much. 
but I mean, compared to a lot, what about a lot of other people putting their pins? And I don't like to have my pins that crowded. But this worked out, and I'm liking the system. I really do, except when the wind blows it across the field. So that's kind of my perspective on what I've got going on uh, on the the turkeys. I would like to have a more permanent way to, to take care of those turkeys and the ducks too, honestly, because I'm going to be raising, well, I'm going to be raising all three. I'm going to be raising turkeys, chickens, and uh, and ducks. All right, so I need to start coming up, uh, figuring out how I want to do uh, a more sustainable way of breeding. You know, you can do meat things and you can do portable all day and get them in fresh grass all day long. I'm trying to figure out how to implement a breeding program and and uh, letting letting them have fresh grass every day and and but keeping them safe from the from the elements uh, for three different species of, of birds is that is what species the right word I hope so so if you've got any ideas let me know I'm, I'm open up ideas I mean you know because I watch the YouTube stuff all the time and you know a lot of them do free range I can't do free range I'm not I'm not a I'm not that diligent a dog trainer uh, I've got a lot of aerial predators. I've had some huge birds flying over. In fact, one of them was was perched up on one of my uh, vineyard posts the other morning. And so, uh, so I have not seen any evidence of any of the of the, those uh, aerial predators that have come down. But they're watching. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'm definitely open to, to suggestions so that I can start breeding my own birds. Yes, I'm still going to do Cornish cross for for as long as I can get them because that's that's what I eat and but I'm also trying to get in, uh, put into place ways for us to still have meat even if I can't get Cornish cross even if I can't get uh, the broad breasted well yeah I get the broad breasted turkeys um, I'm going to start doing more heritage turkeys and and I don't know if you know the difference of broad breasted and the Cornish cross the Cornish cross have been bred specifically for the great big breasts great big meat and they're huge they grow fast anything over eight weeks they keel over and die and I don't know how they keep them long enough to have eggs from them but I'm sure they do something prop them up or something I don't know and the same with the turkeys the turkeys are uh, these these are the broad breasted they're gonna get big they're not and they get so big they don't breed very well either so if I go with heritage they'll do better but the meat's not gonna be as much and stuff and and but that's okay I'm okay with that especially with the turkeys because turkeys are such a big bird anyway and I probably should be okay with that with the chickens my only deal is is when I've done roosters or something like that, they're tough. And so it's not like you're going to have fried chicken anymore. I don't know. I don't, we don't need fried chicken. But you know what I'm saying? There are some things with, that you do with a Cornish cross that you just don't do with a heritage, heritage bird or with, a, with a, anything like that. So there's a lot of things to think about. And I hadn't even covered feed. And we're not going to today. But what I'm trying to say is I'm going to start trying to make, I will still can use my Cornish cross. I've still got my uh, uh, broad breasted. The one I've got, I've got a whole nother batch of broad breasted coming in uh, in a couple weeks or less, maybe less. And because uh, I couldn't get heritage, I tried. So I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to keep trying to, I'm, I'm going to do what I can do. I've got to get meat on the table. Uh, I'm hoping to do some uh, hunting this winter and get some venison. I don't eat venison anymore. Apparently, that's uh, I know I'm allergic to beef, and the doctor said probably all red meat. So, kind of hate that because I like venison too, and it makes a really in the in the way we do it, it makes a really good substitute for beef. I've I've enjoyed venison over beef for many years, but. I'm just trying to get to where I can keep food on the table for our family, regardless of what's available at the hatcheries, regardless of what's available in the grocery stores. And I hope that you are making some arrangements to do that too. I'm not asking you to go out and raise your own birds. I don't know what I'm asking you to do. I, am, I think what I really am asking you to do is consider what's going on. And I know, uh, I know I'm in a little rural place and we've got a little, it's a Dollar General up here and these poor guys, I feel so sorry for them. They're, ha they're struggling to keep employees. They are struggling to keep stuff on the shelf and the shelves are basically bare and stay that way. And of course people make nasty comments like nobody puts anything up. Well, you can't keep employees, you know? Uh, so 
and the supply and demand is bad you know I, I think they've lost for some reason they've lost their dairy uh, source and they're scrambling to get it and get get food there because we are so rural it is an important store for for people out here it's not so much for me well now that I have Kinsey it is apparently but in general before I got Kinsey I didn't I think I'd only been to that store two or three times in a, uh, in a two or three month period you know I don't know now I'm there all the time. Kenzie goes, can I have this? Never mind. So, supply and demand is rough right now, regardless of what the reason is, you know, and uh, what store it is. And right now, I'm seeing it firsthand in that little dollar store up here on the corner. So, keep in mind what you got, what you need to have for for your food. And, and uh, if you need to stock up a little bit, stock up a little bit. If you need to start growing some of your own food. And now, also on another thing, too. It's good to grow your own food, but also to think about how much do we eat and can I grow that much? I can't, but I can make a dent in it. So that's the way it goes. So that's all I got for this morning. We've got a busy day today. Um, Tom's Aunt Frankie's about to turn 88 and I love this woman, love her dearly. And we're gonna go to her birthday party tonight. Kenzie's got a birthday party to go to. I'm about to head down to the Helping Hands Clothing Ministry and work there for two or three hours and, and open it up for people there. So we've got a full day and I'm, I'm probably gonna just end it here instead of taking to, to those things. And um, think about your food. And as always, guys, live until you die. Live until you die. Get off the couch, be somebody. This is the only life you got. You know, I, the, you don't get do redos. And so enjoy your life and live until you die. God bless, guys. And I really mean that. See you next time.